we've got we've got some time for any questions for Chris. Martin, how'd you get the courage to jump from the paying job to um, believing that your partners were going to follow you and make money? Well, that was an easy one for me. What happened with me was a uh, an international conglomerate took over the company. I was merged out of a job. Uh, but my, my uh, business partners were still within the c company. And over a period of 12 months after I had left, they got disaffected with uh, the change in the management. So we started meeting off hours, talking about, why don't we do this ourselves? And, uh, you know, I was, at that point, I was 25 years into my career. And uh, my business partners, you know, 20, 15, 20 years. So it was a pretty heady move. Um, you know, when I, uh, it was 1999 when we started the company, and you know, I was in uh, my late 40s, and it was, I didn't think twice about it because I was, you know, at that point looking to do something different. I did a little, you know, consulting work and stuff like that, but as my, uh, one of my partners describes it, we worked from our kitchen tables, uh, and I remember uh, my wife saying, me, <laughs> I used to leave her notes and the kids' notes and what they ought to be doing for the day or while I'm doing things. <laughs> And she, she said to me one day, she goes, you know, you really need to get some place to work out of and not right here. <laughs> yeah. And the second thing is, you got to remember, we don't report to you, you know, because I had my whole, my whole career, I had people reporting to me, you know, and I, they were my own support team, you know what I mean? So that was kind of pretty interesting. But we worked out of our, uh, our, our own uh, kitchen tables for quite a while. It was a scary event, you know, trying to meet payroll. We raised some venture capital money. We had milestones that we had to hit. And uh, it was daunting to get, you know, the next leg, the next tranche. You know you do this all the time. But it keeps you getting up in the morning every time and staying up late at night. So I really encourage you. My only regret, should have done it 10, 15 years earlier. Any questions for Chris? Yes. Um, you were already in the, the renal care. You, you were already in the renal care industry. I was wondering if any agreements you signed as part of your employment got in the way of you pursuing your technology. Right. That's a very good question, something you should pay attention to. Uh, Non-competes, as they're called. Uh, no, uh, fortunately, I didn't have one, and neither did my associates. Um, the other thing that we did, which was just as important, is that we disengaged ourselves the right way. We didn't, we didn't steal any proprietary knowledge. We didn't steal any customer lists, if you were, and we did it the right way. But nonetheless, that didn't stop the former company from suing us, so, uh, and suing us pretty heavily. So, I mean, uh, I'll tell you, we raised $5 million from uh, the initial investors, and we probably spent a million of it on legal defense with no case at all. We were in absolute rights, and we, at the end of the day, they dropped the lawsuit. But that's an excellent question. So if you're taking something that you've got, up here and moving on, that's okay, but uh, pay attention to your covenants uh, restricting you from doing things. Very good question. One more over here. What are some of the common mistakes you see uh, new entrepreneurs make, or perhaps some of the mistakes you made that you would help save this group as, uh, as they go out on their own? Well, uh, it's another good question. You know, we did some business modeling and, and uh, what we thought we could do. And I look back on that now, 10 years, 11 years hence, and it's interesting. We were pretty optimistic about what we could get done. Uh, we've been tremendously successful, I'll tell you that right now. But we eventually got to where we thought we would. It took us a little bit longer. But our expectations early on were a little bit aggressive, I would say. And another thing that I would tell you, when you get an idea like that and, you, and people are giving you money, they never forget what you said to them when you gave them the money. <laughs> and they are on you. Right? Everything is great when things are going great, but those of us in the room here have been through this, and there's a bunch of people. They're great people until things go sideways. So uh, I think that I think be realistic, I think, about it. Be realistic not only about your, your projections, but be realistic about your own social situation. I kidded about being a family wrecker, but, you know, there's a lot of time commitment that goes into this. I mean... It, it, I will tell you, I never worked as hard as I I mean, I was always a hard worker, but I worked off hours because I really wanted to. Even when we started hitting our stride, and, and to this day, I'm still pretty, you know, I got my head into it pretty good. And so I'd just be realistic, I think, about what you're trying to do. So, sure, Mark. So, leading question. Just your comment. 
feel the reality and things are going to change, why go to the trouble to write an expensive business plan on the front? Well, it's just going to change anyway, and you're going to have to deal with reality as it comes. All right. The answer is because everybody will want one from you because what they do is they use that as a guideline. It becomes your operating plan, and in the case, the case of our VCs, that became their reason to give you the next tranche of money. Okay, when you get to this point, when you get this many done, we'll give you the next million. And they want to see progress as you're going to, progress payments if you call it. And you know, you're going to have to put it down on paper. It's all dollars and cents, cash flow. They're looking for return on investment. So. You need a business plan eventually. So, John. Uh, you, you were working. You were working for a dialysis company. Yes. You left to form up another one. What did you do differently from the place that you worked at to make yourself so successful? Another good question. What What happened was, um, we had a different twist to the business model. The former company did what they were called. 100% company-owned stores, for lack of a better term. Uh, our, our business model was to do joint ventures with the doctors. Heretofore, it had never really been done. And we felt by tying the doctor into the program, uh, we would get, again, the attention and, in an odd way, an interest in doing all the right things, an interest in keeping patients well, healthy, out of the hospital. Uh, they have community pressure on them. Nobody knows they're a part owner. All the good things that we saw in the former company were not there when the company was owning the whole place and just paying salaries to the doctors. So we had a twist on our model. So that was a big edge that we had. And now the market's really gone a lot in that direction because of what, what we did. So. Okay, thanks, Chris. Okay.